hi good evening good afternoon whatever the time is when you're watching this welcome to our first reading wrap up of the year and it's the january reading wrap up i'm a little bit late filming and posting this so apologies if you've been waiting so it is our first reading wrap up of the year if you haven't seen my videos before i review all the books i read every month and just have a little chat about them you can find them in my reading playlist on youtube to summarise briefly, in case you've forgotten, last year I had a reading goal of 100 books and I think we made it to 79, which I was still really pleased with. This year I decided to not set myself a reading target, so I've set myself a reading target for the last two years. And while I've really enjoyed that, I'm just really curious to see how I can read, what I'll read, the numbers I might do without the kind of expectation that I'm trying to hit a target. So far I'm really enjoying that. Um, I've started some longer books which are taking me a little bit longer to read but that's great because I just don't feel like I have to rush through it. I can really take my time. I feel a bit more freedom when it comes to my physical TBR because my physical TBR is so long and I'm not very good at reading physical books. I tend to prioritise my Kindle books just because it's easier. I will do a video on my physical TBR soon as well for those of you that are interested. So without further ado, let's get into my reading wrap up for January. In January, I read six books. Let me just double check that that's correct. I was on holiday in January, so I knew I was gonna get some good reading time in. Although I didn't get as much reading time in as I thought I would, but that's fine because I was just enjoying my holiday. So all of these books this month were digital on my Kindle. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, do not judge me by the content of the books I've read on holiday, please. We have the majority of books here are just like easy, free Kindle Unlimited reads, so let's get into it. All of these books are gonna be Kindle Unlimited as well because I've challenged myself to not buying any books for six months and hopefully that will extend out to the whole year. So I just went with all Kindle Unlimited, so these are all free if you have a Kindle subscription. For this video specifically, I'm gonna just do a little trial of not giving books a star rating. I know I mentioned that at the end of last year. I'm just exploring that a little bit. I will still be giving books a star rating on Storygraph, so you can add me on there if you like, if you wanna see. But I'm not really obsessed with the star rating system. It feels a bit unfair and I'm not very good at rating books, I don't think. It just feels too subjective. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about them. So let me know what you think of that in the comments. If you prefer me to have star ratings, if that's useful for you, by all means, let me know. If it doesn't matter for you either way or you prefer it without, also let me know. I'd just be really curious to hear everyone's thoughts. I find rating books really difficult sometimes, um, so yeah. So the first book I read was Ashvale by Jade Church. This is book one in a series called The Vampire's Thrall and it's a fantasy romance book. So a quick synopsis of Ashvale, our female main character, Leonora, she is murdered and she doesn't remember who killed her. She goes to Ashvale, which is like a vampire high school, college, academic setting to learn how to be a member of undead society. So straight off the bat, my main takeaway for this book was that it was incredibly confusing. That was literally one of the first things I wrote in the notes on my phone while I was reading it. And when I went and looked at the reviews after I'd done my review, a lot of people said the same thing. So I'm glad it wasn't just me. I feel like the author from the get-go, it starts with her murder, but from the get-go, a lot of the systems in place and like the fantasy elements aren't explained very well if explained at all. I found myself rereading a lot of passages, trying to like untangle it in my head. Basically, it took me a really long time to understand that in this book and in this world and in this setting, there are two levels to vampirism. So you are a vampire, like you're born a vampire, and then you experience like your first death and that's when you become a member of the undead and that's when you're like a supercharged super powered proper vampire so the first level of vampirism is kind of like a juvenile vampirism so the undead are considered powerful and better in like every single way so like super gorgeous super strong super horny like really into blood very powerful very elite that's like the typical vampire as we know it so like the lower level the like college age students they will experience a death and then turn into undead and then you can die properly but there's like a double death thing so basically leonora got murdered which is 
illegal you shouldn't be murdered before your time you shouldn't be murdered young essentially because you don't know how to be a vampire yet so the author never really explained this or didn't explain it well i thought so i felt like i was going crazy i couldn't understand i was like oh is she a human is she not a human and i thought it was me and then i read all the reviews there's also quite a lot of typos and grammar and like punctuation errors which made it a lot harder to read and i'm not gonna lie this is something that's like really grinds my gears because i just think oh my god like you could just have another two passes over it and you would have got those it's just poor editing isn't it it does get bonus points for the male main character hayes love a bisexual male main character and it was very smutty like when the smut kicked in so that made it a bit more bearable i was a bit like not expecting it and i know we should expect it from vampires at this point but i was pleasantly surprised by that i feel like overall i should have really enjoyed a horny vampire academy a bit more you know kind of like leaning towards house of night vibes some of the plot twists were really good um but yeah i don't think i'll be reading the second one next up we have another kindler limited this was enemies with benefits by roxy noir this is a classic classic romance book if you can't tell by the cover <laughs> so our main couple violet and eli they've been rivals since they were literally kids they haven't seen each other for eons they've basically forgotten the other person exists until a new job opportunity for eli brings him back to the hometown of spruce vale surprise surprise the job is at violet's workplace so tropes we've got like a forced proximity enemies to lovers small town romance the town is called Sprucefell, for Christ's sakes. This was the start of my holiday reading. I turned this on on the plane and was like, let's get into it, let's go. Like, cheesy romance, let's go. I found it quite slow to get into and I found it very cheesy. Like, I love a cheesy book, but this was very cheesy. His name's Eli Loveless. I don't know, it was just this kind of like, she was the one from like a bad family like problems with her mum he had like I mean there's a Loveless Brothers series so he comes from like a really big family I should have expected it from the town name to the character names to the situation with her family the whole thing felt like a bit like a Hallmark movie without the Christmas I feel like I don't have much to say about this one because it was just very much an okay book I probably will never reread it again so the main like cause of their rivalry was a contest at the work where whoever like works the hardest over the summer like the wedding season gets like a 20 grand bonus which i think was fucking weird like i get that that's a lot of money but like it just it just took me out of it i was like what like small town events company is giving you a 20k bonus to like one person for working hard and there's also like no metric that you, your success can be measured against i don't know maybe i'm being too real here Maybe I'm thinking too much with my my head and logic. The spice was okay, the spice was good. Um, I can't really remember any of it to be honest because I didn't write notes on this one, I read this on the plane. It just like passed me by in a blur. It was all right. But for the next books, I read three books out of a four book series. They're all very, very short. I did read them back to back. I'm gonna review them together. I haven't read the last one in January, but I've started it now. So I will review that separately. But to be honest, because I was reading it on holiday and I read like two of the books in one day because they're so short. I can barely remember like the sequence of events that happens in each book. So I'm gonna give you like a summary of the books and my thoughts on the series so far as a whole. I hope that's okay. <laughs> so the series is The Institute of the Shadow Fae by C.N. Crawford. Book one is Court of Shadows, book two is Court of Darkness, and book three is Court of Night. These are all fantasy romance, you get no points for guessing that. So all of these books, they're about 250 pages, if that. So really, really short, and it's a four part series. Let's do a synopsis, and this is mainly gonna be like setting you up for the first one. So I'm not gonna synopsize book two and book three, if that's okay. We have our main character, he's a fae, his name's Ruadan. Ruadan? He is part of like this elite fae task force that are tasked with killing outlaws and specifically outlaws with magic like ariana who is our female main character ariana bargains with him pleads for her life and he lets her live on the condition that she come to the institute of the shadow fae and pay them back by training with them she needs to earn her place with them basically he sees her power he sees her potential so first of all i've read some cn crawford before i read the frost and nectar series i think it was a duology the book one or book one of them is called ambrosia she has a lot of books she has like 60 books or something and i've basically put off reading another series by her because it was one of those things that it really was 
like a palette cleanser in terms of fantasy romance it wasn't objectively good it was just kind of like filling a void for me you know like a fantasy romance void basically i think all fantasy romance is ripped from like five original series and then that's it i went into this knowing what i'd get from her knowing that it was like a 240 page book so you know it's not like a huge time investment it really didn't matter to me if it was like amazing or not so far it was very okay i have been like fairly hooked because the books are so short and i just want to read and get through them so it's a bit of a weird one like i don't think it's bad i probably wouldn't recommend it to people but i don't think it's great so things i liked is that it was set in london i really i really like this from fantasy books i don't know i like somewhere tangible we assume it's set in the future because there's quite a lot of modern references but there's some things that happen like the fucking plague that they reference loads as happening recently character wise um ariana is supposed to be this like badass scathing sarcastic very powerful main character she's got this really like dry and witty internal monologue like constantly going i think it almost worked but i'm not gonna lie i found myself cringing quite hard a few times just at some of the the things she said it was a bit like i'm not like other girls and i think when she meets ruadan it feels 10 times worse like the cringiness because he has taken a vow of silence so like she it's very one-sided witty banter and it doesn't really land a lot of the time i don't know it's worse it feels worse than the first book but i'm used to it by the second and third book it to me it feels almost like a bit satirical but like i don't think that's the intention the sexual tension does like escalate quite heavily in the, the third maybe the first and the second actually which was a good read i was like enjoying that because i quite like uh, a bit more of a slow burn like a bit more drawn out i think that's ultimately what keeps me hooked in books like that i just want to wait till they actually do it the sexual tension goes crazy as well because ruadan's an incubus i wouldn't be as forgiving if these books weren't literally all like 250 pages each there's no time it's not an eight book series it's a four book series i feel like they've got a little bit of everything to keep us entertained so there's a lot of action in it quite a lot of violence it can be quite gory at times sexual tension like the plot is driven forward you know there's a lot of lore she's crammed a lot into short books it's a quick read that i've mostly ended up enjoying and i will read the fourth i'll probably never pick them up again i'll probably forget about them they kind of fall into that realm for me of the fantasy romance kindle unlimited that i went through a real phase of picking up but i can't remember the names or the authors of any of them because they all just kind of blur into one i've started the fourth book so it'll be in the february wrap up but i'm just looking forward to seeing where it goes i don't think i'll be particularly blown away i don't think it will sit with me for a long time but yeah if any of you have read any other cn crawford books that you feel are really different or really stand out let me know because I felt quite invested in frost and nectar but i think it's because of the romance she writes not the actual events next up another romance with this kind of cover i read reluctantly yours by erin hawkins so this is a dual point of view romance so we have points of view from chloe and barrett chloe works as an assistant for barrett's mother and barrett is a millionaire like in his own right like independently of his mother although they're, they're like a powerhouse together a bunch of stuff goes wrong with like bookings and chloe ends up throwing a hen party or a bachelorette in her boss's townhouse penthouse thing barrett finds out she owes him a favor to keep his silence and that favor is she needs to attend as a date to his business dinner slight enemies to lovers vibe like kind of like rival it's not like really enemies to lovers but it's like you know when they both fancy each other so much it starts off as hatred they irritate each other they grate each other up the wrong way heavy fake dating trope and like uh assistant boss kind of type trope but not directly i really liked this book i really liked it chloe is a very sweet character i feel like we don't get enough sweet and kind women in a lot of the ones i've been reading lately and sweet and kind in a way that it's not like super grumpy sunshine because i get a bit bored of that barrett is a gentleman despite being a millionaire really enjoy a millionaire man that's not too up himself like he felt quite humble if such a thing is possible as always with these kinds of books there's a third act like break up argument kind of thing that to be honest i always find it a bit yawn i feel like theirs wasn't too unbearable i don't like it when it's like a really simple miscommunication um that could have just been fixed by them talking this one wasn't too bad and that's part and parcel of reading romance books i think if anyone has any romance books that don't have a third act break up please recommend them to me so one thing i did notice is the uh, the dual pov where it switches between chloe and barrett i felt like they both really sounded the same 
you know when there's not like a discernible difference between who's talking but despite that that really wasn't a big issue for me this was a fun and light-hearted easy read i found the sex scenes really well written i really enjoyed like the spiciness of the book it's fun light-hearted and i thought quite well paced so if you need like a palette cleanser to clear the decks just dust out the cobwebs just in between books maybe you're waiting for another book to arrive i would recommend this one the last book i read in january was the poppy war by rf kuang it's a historical fantasy book and it's actually on kindle unlimited which i was really surprised at i'll try to do a little synopsis because it's quite a big book so there's a test called the keju i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly um which is to seek out and determine who the most talented students are in the empire rin who is a war orphaned peasant girl that lives in the south aces this test much to the surprise of everyone around her she was due to be married off and live a life that she just really wasn't interested in so this led her to take the test from there she gains entry into synagogue which is an elite military academy not an easy task for a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south as everyone that attends the academy is fairly rich so while she's there she realizes she has a very lethal and like untapped power which is the power of shamanism and then yeah i think that's all i can synopsize about doing the whole book in one I was really nervous to read this for two reasons. The first being, it's so well-reviewed, really critically acclaimed. I keep seeing it all over book talk. And this is my first RF Kuang book. I didn't read Babel or Babel, I think it's Babel. But I saw Babel had really mixed reviews as well. So I just really wasn't sure. It's been on my list for ages. It's been on my Kindle for months. The second reason is I really struggle with historical fiction or like high fantasy kind of epic fantasy books if it's too like epic i struggle to keep track of them I, I really struggle to remember all the details extensive lore is really hard for me to read i think it's like the historical element that i struggle with as well totally a me problem so that's why i was nervous to read it and it's quite a long book i think it was about five or six hundred pages let me check 545 pages so fairly long so i really liked this i was really pleasantly surprised by that i was really impressed with myself for enjoying it i think i had a bit of brain rot from all the romance I was reading. I don't know if you ever get that, but yeah, it's very real. The brain rot was very well established. The world is so interesting and the level of detail is absolutely fucking insane. I, like straight off the bat, I'm so impressed by the skill that it takes to write any kind of historical fantasy or historical fiction. That is so many plates to spin. So it's very, like I can't imagine how complex it must be to write. And it is very complex given that it's Chinese war but not once did I really feel out of my depth or like I wasn't getting what was going on. I did have to read a lot slower than I usually would because of the level of detail, but that's not a problem. I'm not on a reading target this year. I really wanted to take it in and I, I didn't read for like long stints. I kept picking it up for an hour and then putting it down, coming back to it. So I read less book over more days rather than binging it and i think that allowed me to like process a lot better i really loved the setting of the elite chinese militia academy and then i really also loved the super intense like anti-hero we have in the book i won't give away too many spoilers i felt like the complexities of war were really well captured and you have this kind of like two-sided coin of all these super rich snobby kids at this academy who are all like the sons and daughters of famous generals all like really elite and like snobby all studying strategy around a table all studying war like being primed to to have war as their career they're going to be like the next generation's generals and like war heroes and then you have on the flip side the actual like devastating consequences and trauma of war and like how that affects people let alone young people and like the injury and the, the i mean it's quite graphic at some points but like the actual tone of war and the chaos of war not being this hugely organized thing all the time i feel like i really can't stop raving about how well written it is although there was a couple of things that i didn't enjoy but i think that was more of a me thing and not a book thing so the first thing that's definitely a me thing is i felt like rin is so annoying at some points like she's just making stupid rash decisions she just like go and die then rin make a decision that's gonna get everyone killed but i think it's it reflects that she's a young inexperienced girl even though she's really clever and that's just like a part of the story and a part of her character arc it did make me really annoyed at some points because she is just a rash young girl but also i'll be interested to see her character development. I also found the pacing a bit off for me, which at first I thought was a me problem, but in some points it feels like it goes really, really fast 
and then others it really drags for quite a long time i found the last quarter of the book felt like it moved way too fast it's definitely very action filled and i think that's why i struggled to read it at some points because i'd say like the middle third of the book were, felt just like it was dragging on a bit but yeah I will say it was really, to me, it felt like really high fantasy, but I would really recommend you read it if you're kind of leaning more towards that type of fantasy anyway. It was out of my comfort zone, but I'm really glad I read it and I probably will read the second, but I just need like a little bit of a break between the first and the second. So all in all, I feel like that was a very short video, but here we are, that's me done. I hope you enjoyed that video. You can follow me on Storygraph because I will be doing reviews and ratings on there as well. I only ever do the basic review format, but I'll do the star rating so you can see. I also do post what I'm reading on Instagram um, if you wanna keep up with what I'm reading live and not have to wait till the end of the month. I'm hoping I'll be able to film some more bookish content soon. It's just one of those things, it's hard to come up with ideas for bookish stuff, I think, for me personally. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I hope you enjoyed it here. If you did, don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment, let me know what you thought. My upload schedules are Wednesdays and Sundays around 6pm. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.